Okay, guys, in this episode, Rick Hogg of War Hogg is going to talk about the building box for all working animals, and that's animal obedience. Hey, guys, I'm Rick Hogg with War Hogg Tactical out here at the Pescagoula Police Firing Range, and I've got my war dog, Duca, here with me. On today's episode of Trigger Time TV, we're going to talk about some canine obedience, certain tools that we use, and just how I kind of trained Duco to get him to do some of the skills that he, that he did. And then also hopefully share some tips to you. So one of the things when I was a handler, everyone would come up and ask, hey, my dog doesn't heal or my dog doesn't do this. And you became the subject matter expert. So what I want to do is pass on one of the tips uh, that one of my most frequent questions. And that was, how do you get a dog to heal? So first of all, I want to start off with, I have the patent pending Warhog loop leash. So what you see is we've got a leash that has a sequence of loops in here. And the importance with these loops is what it does for me when I'm trying to help or trying to train my dog to heal. It gives me a point, it gives me a reference point to put my hand. So first thing I want to do is make sure that I have, I like to use a choke collar and I keep it high up on his neck. You see it's as, as close up there on his ears. So that way it gives me a good positive control on my canine. So I'm gonna give Duke a verbal and a hand and arm signal command. First, I give him a leg tap and he's gonna walk with me. As he's walking, I can form a helicopter with my leash to keep his nose back because ultimately what I want him to do is be able to first, heal at my side without having to do it. But the helicopter is a simple way that I can put a hand in the loop. Now you can see that he'll automatically kind of come back, back to a heel position and walk nicely. So again, it's a technique that you can use when you're out there trying to work with your dog. Remember, ultimately what we're trying to do is get it where we can in essence go hands-free or leash-free with our canine. Notice there he ended up breaking away, so we haven't quite worked out what we needed to. Duco, here. First. So this works out perfect for now. We can hook him back up. I'll give him his command. First. Now we have him walking nicely next to us. So again, if he wants to lurch forward, and I'm going to try to set him up for failure a little bit, we can use the helicopter again, and that doesn't work. So the other beauty with, that I like as far as with the loop leash is it gives me the opportunity that now, whether I'm military, law enforcement, or even a civilian, and want to move around with my canine, I can take this snap link, I can hook it into my loop system. Notice it goes over my equipment. Now, first, we can walk. So if I'm just Joe the civilian, I can be running, texting on my phone, not paying attention. Or if I'm the military law enforcement guy, I can sit there and draw my pistol or my rifle and I've got my animal right here in control. So again, it just gives me some options that I can use. And you notice he stays nice and tight. We can use this when we're moving through a CQB environment, Duke Foost, or whatever the case may be. Do you go here? Sits. So again, it just gives me another hands-free option that I can use versus always having to be on the leash um, and working the dog. So again, hopefully these, these tips and techniques will help you out. What I want you to do for, on this segment, we kinda gotta, we're going to dedicate it to the SOF canines that have fallen um, for our country. So again, the SOFK9 Foundation. If you get a chance, check them out. If you're in the Fayetteville, North Carolina, definitely go visit the memorial and remember um, this episode is dedicated to those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice, both K9 and Handler. Again, this is uh, Rick Hogg. We'll see you guys out in the range and train hard.